Good morning, folks. Today, we've got a look at a potential double space weather impact coming today and tomorrow. We will hit cosmology, crops, and solar climate forcing as we begin at spaceweathernews.com. We find the last 24 hours on our star brings the coronal holes towards the limb with the flare and CME off the south incoming, which we also saw yesterday. That CME has now been thoroughly dissected on satellites, and both endless spirals are now updated. On SOHO coronagraphs, we see most of the ejection heading left, but the totality of the plasma cloud expands around the sun-blocking circle. That CME is very weak, but is also definitely heading this way. And before it arrives, we will likely see the effects of the second helping of this coronal hole stream. The solar wind should ramp back up due to that enhanced stream today or tomorrow, and the CME could impact just shortly after. Nothing scary expected, but if it is a double impact instead of merged events, we may get minor geomagnetic storms and auroral enhancements. We will, of course, also be monitoring the active region on the north. It has failed to produce any significant flaring, but it hasn't stopped morphing around. And there's likely more coming behind the limb as well. Quick stop at the crops before we head to space. Over the last two decades, despite climate change and deforestation and allegedly disappearing coastlines, we have had a 9% increase in farmland in just those 20 years. Up next are two simulation-based animations purporting to show various times in the history of the universe moving up towards the present. What's interesting are these simulations seem to come out en masse right before something new like James Webb is going to give them all the observables and they don't have to run simulations with mostly guesses being input. The other one isn't a time cube sequence but a fly through simulated space and time. Again, one struggles to understand the obsession with waiting until you are about to get the data to start pumping out your guesses of what that data will be. Speaking of guesses, Folks, they are saying these radio circles are enormous and are wrapped around distant galaxies. First, they don't have a ton of trusting their distance calculation on these, which would represent something like a nova-blown bubble, but at the galactic scale. They are still not sure what these odd radio circles are. And last but not least, the Solar Climate Forcing Research Field scored a double on the low-latitude forcing. This recognition and study of the various ways that the sun and solar wind influence not just the polar aurora, but the entire atmosphere across latitudes and altitudes, is a critical step towards understanding the final pieces of how that particle energy in the solar wind finds different ways of forcing the low-latitude ionosphere as well as at high latitudes. And when you touch the global electric circuit, you touch the atmosphere all the way to the ground. We greatly appreciate your support. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.